Hi everyone, it's Lila with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. I know I've been away for a couple weeks, but I am back with a beginner's tumbler tutorial. I'm showing you how I created all three of these tumblers using T-Rex alcohol inks. Now you'll see that these tumblers look very similar with the fishermen and the scenery, but each tumbler I did a little differently and I wanted to show y'all each tumbler I did. This video is made for beginners, so I will try to be as detailed as possible and try to go step by step for all of my beginners. If you do have further questions, I will link a help video in my description below and be sure to check that out. Like I said, I am using these T-Rex alcohol inks. I did purchase them from Glitter Heart Co. I really liked these inks. I used the 12 piece starter kit for all of the cups and I'll post in the video and in the description below which colors I use for each tumbler. I did use the 12 bottle starter kit. This comes with all of the colors in the rainbow, including a clear color for y'all to use. Okie doke, and with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with these tumblers. And I'm working with a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler for all three of the tumblers. This is going to be wiped down or sanded with a 120 grit sanding block. Once I finish sanding, I'm taking 91% alcohol and then I'm wiping the entire tumbler down with 91% alcohol. Once I wiped them down with 91% alcohol, I then took my tumblers outside and I spray painted them white. It does not have to be a flat finish. You can use satin or gloss white for this step. And let's start with the first tumbler right here. I am using the alcohol inks, of course, and I'm placing the inks on with my makeup wedges. These are all of the colors I'm using from bottom to top, the deep sea blue, glacier blue, Jurassic green, sunshine yellow, orange, and red. I am placing those from bottom to top with these makeup wedges. I have some napkins on hand, and then I also have my 91% alcohol. Be sure to wear gloves while you're using any alcohol inks because sometimes it will stain your hands. I'm taking my first color and I'm placing that on the bottom of the tumbler and all I'm doing is taking those wedges and dabbing it all around the tumbler. You'll notice that I'm not doing this carefully. I'm not really paying attention where I place these colors and you'll see some white spots uh, or bare spots around that blue area. It is completely okay. We're going to smooth that out. So I start with that dark blue and then I move on to the lighter blue and I go all around the tumbler. I am using different sponges or wedges for this because I don't wanna use like the blue with the green and then it will turn a different color. You don't wanna use the yellow with the blues. You know, you wanna make sure these colors are separated because I want that water with the greenery in the background and then with that sunset on the top. So make sure you're not mixing them too much but whenever you're placing that new color on the tumbler, you can overlap that color with the last color. Especially whenever you're using this yellow, this yellow is a very light color. So you're going to see me place the yellow on top of the tumbler and then the orange and then the red. And then you'll see me later layering those colors together. So if you want more of a blended tumbler instead of like a stacked color tumbler, you're gonna see me blend the orange on top of the yellow and the reds on top of the yellow and the orange. And it makes a really pretty sunset, nice fisherman sky. And once all of my colors are placed on my tumbler, I'm taking a clean alcohol 
wipe or makeup wedge and I'm adding 91% alcohol on that wedge and then I'm blotting around those areas. I'm getting rid of any of those harsh lines that I may have created. This 91% alcohol just allows that alcohol to separate and I'm blending those colors more and I'm getting a full coverage on that tumbler with these alcohol inks. I'm filling in any of those bare spots or white spots around the tumbler. And don't be shy. I mean, don't, you know, don't be scared to mix all your colors together like I said you want to keep those blues greens yellows and reds separated but you also want those same colors like the colors that are in the same color palette I should say like the light blue and the dark blue to kind of mix a little bit to make it look more realistic and not just you know colors just thrown on onto straight lines if that makes sense so you'll see me blending especially up top like I mentioned earlier the, the uh, oranges, the reds, and the yellows. Just dab, dab, dab all around the tumbler until your little heart is happy. And once I was satisfied with my tumbler's design, I placed my tumbler to the side and I let it dry for two hours. I am not sealing this. I do not spray seal this. If I spray seal it, you're gonna see a lot of dots over these inks. If I add Mod Podge to this and try to seal it with Mod Podge or anything like that, it's going to spread these colors everywhere. So the best way to let these inks dry and I should say cure is to just let it air dry for just two hours before we move on to epoxy. And let's move on to our next tumbler, which is placing some alcohol inks on my wet epoxy. So this is a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler. I'm placing 20 milliliters of epoxy on this tumbler. That's 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B totaling 20 milliliters of epoxy. Once I place all of my epoxy on my tumbler, you're going to see me apply my heat to my tumbler. This is to pop any bubbles I may have placed on the tumbler inside of the epoxy. So pop all those bubbles. Once you finish popping those bubbles, make sure you let your tumbler sit and cool down before you add your inks to the tumbler. If you do add alcohol inks to hot epoxy, then it's going to cause those alcohol inks to spread and it's going to cause them to lighten. So let it cool down for at least 30 seconds and then add your inks whenever your tumbler is not hot. And here I go with popping my little bubbles with my cute heat gun. I did get this heat gun from CC DIY and I use the second setting or the highest setting to pop my bubbles in my epoxy. And now that my epoxy has cooled down, I'm now adding those inks to my tumbler and it is easy as that. I really do not think how much or how little inks I added per section. I just started from the bottom and now we're here. <laughs> I started from the bottom and then I went to the top and you see that I started with a dark blue again. I went in with some teal, some green, then yellow, orange, and red. Similar color scheme to the last tumbler. I am not touching my uh, tumbler with, with my hands or anything with, uh, with this tumbler. I am just adding those inks and you'll see I'm adding those reds over those oranges again to make that nice sunset sky. And once those inks are placed on my tumbler, I'm going in with my heat gun on the second or highest setting, and I'm going in fast with the heat. I'm only doing that just enough to get those inks swirling just a little bit. I don't want those colors to mush. So I'm just doing a couple swipes or sweeps on my tumbler with that heat gun. And while that second tumbler spins, we're moving on to that last tumbler. I'm using again, 20 milliliters of epoxy, 10 milliliters part A and 10 milliliters part B, applying that all around the tumbler, then using my heat gun to pop all of those tiny little bubbles, letting my tumbler cool down, and then we're adding some inks to the tumbler. Thank you. 
and this color scheme is going to be a little different. I'm starting from the top and then going to the bottom. So red, orange, yellow, and then black. Keep in mind that black spreads very quickly, so make sure you're adding as little as possible as you can with the black. You can always add more. It's a lot harder to take away. So you'll see I'm just adding about three, maybe four dots of the black, and you'll see how quickly it spreads and how much it takes over. So do keep that in mind. I'm trying to add some yellow with the black just to kind of mix it in so it's not just a black base. I want some type of dimension and depth. And once all of the ink's on the tumbler, I'm then taking my gloved finger and I am just swiggling or swirling, zing, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but just going up the tumbler with my gloved hand, just smearing around. Make sure you're not pressing too hard. I am very heavy handed, y'all know. So I did press hard in some spots. So you'll see that there at the very end, you'll see that there's some bare spots on the tumbler. So make sure you're pressing down not as hard as I did. So you're still allowing your tumbler to be very coated with your epoxy and for it not to spread or to create any bare spots. Make sure you are wiping your gloved finger off with a baby wipe as you're going up the tumbler because you don't want any of that black base to go up on like the red or the sky area. You can even do little swirls. You don't have to keep doing the little Z's like I do. That's just something that I've always done. But if you wanna make a little swirly swirl, go ahead and do so. I guess I thought these tumblers were so pretty, they deserved a dance party, right? <laughs> so then I let my tumblers spin on the cup turner for four hours. I then turned off my cup turners and I let them air dry or air cure with the cup turners off for another 20 hours. So you want the total drying time of 24 hours. I also applied 10 millers of epoxy total to my first tumbler that I alcohol inked. So do keep in mind that I did use the same drying time as what I did for these tumblers. So once these tumblers are dry, we'll move on with that next step. And here are all of my tumblers. Once that epoxied cured, look how vibrant those alcohol inks are. I'm now going in with my X-Acto knife and I always cut that excess epoxy from the rim of my tumblers. And then I go in with a 180 grit sanding block and I sand away the top of the tumbler so it just gets rid of any of those pokey parts and just make sure you have a clean rim. And then I use that sanding block to sand all of my tumblers. Since I was placing a decal on these tumblers and placing another coat of epoxy, I thought it couldn't hurt to do a little bit of sanding on them and get rid of any of those tiny little bubbles or bumps that may have been created from that epoxy. And once I was finished with the sanding, I took my 91% alcohol and I wiped each tumbler down with that 91% alcohol to remove any of those excess oils I may have placed on the tumbler or any of that sanding dust that may be on the tumblers. And now these buttes are ready for decals. I'm placing two boats on the two tumblers and then a guy standing and fishing on one tumbler. And then I'm adding those cute little birds around the top of the tumblers. So we're going to do this first one, which is the one you can see those bare spots I was telling you all about. Um, I did press down with that epoxy. So just keep that in mind, but it's all right. It looks cute. Placing that decal on the tumbler, it does not matter if you are using 631 or 651 vinyl. So you can use temporary or permanent vinyl because we're going to add that epoxy over this decal. So it's gonna seal it right up. Using that transfer tape, using my squeegee to rub down that vinyl and then removing my transfer tape. Make sure to keep this piece of transfer tape because we're going to use this for all three decals and those birds. So no need to waste any materials. I really didn't like the water ripple that added on these decals. So I just cut them off once I placed it on the tumbler. I just wanted the man to be just completely blended into that black area. And I thought it just looked more natural that way without the water ripple. And then reusing my piece of transfer tape and applying those silhouette birds all around the top of the tumbler.
on to my second tumbler. I'm placing the boat on the tumbler. I'm removing these little water ripples or watermarks uh, from the bottom of the boat. And I'm just doing that by cutting it off with my X-Acto knife and trying, trying to get it off. And then we're going to place it on the tumbler. Now the hardest part about these decals specifically was that fishing line. That fishing line was a pain in the butt because it was so small and so teensy weensy that you had to be very careful applying, first weeding the vinyl and then applying that vinyl on the tumbler and making sure that that uh, decal didn't come off whenever you peeled that transfer tape from the tumbler. And with this tumbler specifically, with it being so dark with the green and the blues, uh, maybe white vinyl would have looked great with this as well, just to make that vinyl pop a little more. And for my third tumbler, again, removing those water ripples with an X-Acto knife. And then you'll see that I cut the bottom of the boat with a pair of scissors. I really love these uh, decals because if I cut the boat all crooked-like, it really doesn't matter because it's a boat. Also, if I add that decal on the tumbler and it's not straight, again, it really doesn't matter because a boat floats. So sometimes it's floating more up, maybe to the left or the right. So this tumbler is so simple. Of course, this last decal wanted to be a pain in my butt and you could see that the fishing line was very super thin and it just wasn't working for me. So I cut that line and then I overlapped it to make it look like one line. So it was bubbling up and it wasn't sticking in place. So all I did was cut it and then I took one of my weeding tools and I made sure it looked like one line. Remember, you guys can peel these decals up and you can recreate them once they're placed and nobody will ever know. Now I'm applying all of those birds around my tumbler using my excess piece of transfer tape. And when I realized I had more birds left over, I went crazy with those birds and I placed them all around each tumbler. And once all of my decals were placed on my tumbler, I went in with my quick coat from CC DIY. Guys, this stuff is very important. This is a sealer for decals. So especially that little line or the fishing line that may come up, I wanted to place that right on those decals. So whenever I place my epoxy on my tumbler, those decals do not come up through the epoxy so I applied all of that sealer and you could see I don't have to apply much, just a little bit on every single decal so they will not lift whenever you epoxy. This stuff is a lifesaver and I use this for every single decal that I place on a tumbler. And this sealer takes about 20 to 25 minutes to completely dry and once it's dry, we're going to move in with epoxying. For each tumbler, I used about 15 milliliters of epoxy. That's 7.5 milliliters part A and 7.5 milliliters part B, totaling 15 milliliters of epoxy for my tumblers. I wanted a thick enough coat so I didn't have to do another coat of epoxy, but if you are the type of person that likes to do two coats of epoxy, that's fine. I would use 10 milliliters of epoxy for the first coat, Go ahead and sand some if, if needed, and then 10 milliliters of epoxy for the second coat to have it fully epoxied and locked in. And once my tumblers were epoxied, I let them spin on the cup turner for four hours. I then turned off my cup turner and let them air dry or air cure for another 20 hours with a total drying time of 24 hours.
And once my final coat of epoxy is cured, I then take my X-Acto knife one more time and I go around the rim of that tumbler again, removing any of that dried or cured epoxy that may have been placed on the tumbler. I then go in with some acetone to clean up the inside. Yes, acetone to clean up the inside of my tumbler. You can see that I have some spray paint and some alcohol inks in the inside. Once I clean this up with acetone, I make sure to wash these tumblers out with a clean paper towel using Dawn dish soap, making sure to wash it at least 20 seconds before packaging and making these tumblers ready to go. And once those insides are completely cleaned, I'm adding that nice lid on top and making these finished and ready to sell. Let me know which one of these tumblers are your favorites. I know my favorite. I will post that in the comments once I received y'all's opinions and let me know how you enjoyed this video, um, which technique you might use and which technique you're like, meh, not so much. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. Thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll see y'all next time.